Cult films can't be planned. How or why a film earns this status, nobody really knows. What we do know, it's something that just happens. Consider the film Xanadu, initially a low-budget roller disco film. As the project took on more high-profile actors and musicians, its budget snowballed. It flopped at the box office, the soundtrack went double platinum, and a cult movie was born. So, how did a film that a movie reviewer in the 1980s told audiences to Xana don't have such lasting cultural success? It could have been the mix of old and new stars. Xanadu was veteran actor Gene Kelly's swan song, marking the end of a 40-year film career. Our Olivia, still reeling from the success of Grease, was his final on-screen dance partner. Or maybe it was the spectacular soundtrack that spawned five top 40 hits that helped to raise Xanadu's cult status. Two high-profile music producers were each given one side of the vinyl record to work their magic. Aussie John Farrar, who'd already had two top five hits for Olivia on the Grease soundtrack, was the natural choice to produce the soundtrack album's A-side, even pulling in a favour from ex-bandmate Cliff Richard for a duet with his muse. The B-side was produced by Jeff Lynne of ELO fame. The crowning glory of this soundtrack is an unlikely mesh of a 1940s big band with 1980s synth pop band The Tubes. The plot, inspired by the 1947 film Down to Earth, isn't anything to write home about. However, the ultra-modern fashions and special effects give Xanadu a look that screams 1980s. No amount of theorising will really help us understand why Xanadu is a cult film. Maybe the best way to understand is just to watch it. Immerse yourself in some really great music and wonder where the sense of magic has gone from the cinema of today.